Unlike cars, which are built along robotic assembly lines, RVs are largely built by hand along manual assembly lines. They are, at their most fundamental level, houses on wheels. The Olisha say that quality since the recession has gone down the drain. Quality, in this case, spans a range of concerns. Becky and Tom recall their 2018 motorhome missing a black tank flush, a relatively inexpensive part that helps in cleaning out the onboard tank that holds wastewater from the toilet. They bring up the walkthroughs of units they've done over the last several years at the Hershey RV Show, which is routinely billed as America's largest showcase of recreational vehicles. The one thing we find is there's always broken doors or latches in the cabinets, and this is in brand new units, says Becky. Gerber, who has been writing about RVing since 2000, packed up his life in 2014 and spent four years full-time in his own RV, interviewing fellow owners across the country to catalog what he calls the RV industry death spiral. That's what really woke me up to the problem that consumers have getting RVs, he says. There's been a noticeable decline in the quality of RVs coming out since the Great Recession, and I don't know, really, what's causing that. His best guess, as an outsider looking in, comes down to the sheer quantity of recreational vehicles currently being built. With demand so high and most manufacturers concentrated in Elkhart, a town of 50,000 where it's estimated more than 80% of all RVs worldwide are built, a labor force already stretched thin is being asked to pump out even more RVs. Who's to say something wouldn't slip through the cracks every now and then? Unlike cars, which are built along robotic assembly lines, RVs are largely built by hand along manual assembly lines. They are, at their most fundamental level, houses on wheels, and one motorhome's floor plan might be entirely different from the next. Not to mention that a teardrop camping trailer, for example, is not a Class B paneled van trailer, and therefore will be constructed differently. The rule, typically, is don't buy a new RV. If you buy a new RV, you're going to be sitting in a dealership for two years getting it fixed. Not since the years before the Great Recession has the market for recreational vehicles in the U.S. been quite as hot as it is now. In 2017, for the first time in more than 40 years, and for the first time since the main industry group, the Recreation Vehicle Industry Association has kept track, American RV manufacturers moved more than 500,000 units from their factories to the roughly 2,600 RV dealerships across the country. Since those record high production numbers, the overall RV market has cooled a bit. More than 482,000 units were sold last year, which is about 20,000 fewer RVs than in 2017, but still well above the fewer than 170,000 RVs being sold at the peak of last decade's recession. Despite shipments of RVs to dealers dropping about 20% so far this year compared to 2018, industry professionals remain optimistic about growth and predict shipments will increase in 2020. But as the Olishas found when they bought a new motorhome, dueling forces are shaping the current RV market. A buoyant economy coupled with rising interest in the nomadic lifestyle led to a rebound in the RV industry. The comeback is as much due to millennials as it is to a retiring generation of baby boomers, of 78.8 million households that hit the great outdoors at least once in 2018, the kids are routinely blamed for their poor adulting skills and love of fancy toast made up 41% of campers. At the same time, stories abound, in forums, recall blogs, personal testimonies, industry publications, and talk radio, of disgruntled owners of RVs who purchased a unit only to immediately about-face the vehicle to a dealership to fix a problem. I've had people tell me they've bought a brand new RV, drove it off the lot in a rainstorm, and it started leaking, says Steve Lado, a consumer protection attorney in Michigan who has handled his fair share of lawsuits for owners of allegedly defective RVs. There are more than 600,000 views of his Don't Buy an RV YouTube video. Some complaints focus on the quality of workmanship that goes into manufacturing a recreational vehicle. Others focus on missing items that would improve the experience. Still, others address the design aesthetic of many recreational vehicles. The trademark swoops on a beige background, often described as boring or hideous. Kevin Broom, director of media relations at the Arvia, says that the vast majority of owners are very satisfied with their RVs. In a survey asking current RV owners who recently bought a unit about their experiences, the RVA found that 88% rated their experience as good, very good, or excellent, Broom says. Still, addressing and solving these consumer complaints presents what Bob Wheeler, president and CEO of Airstream, calls an existential challenge for the RV industry. The fact is that 50% of our buyers are first-time RV owners, says Wheeler, who also serves as co-chairman of the Go RV and Coalition, the national marketing campaign of the RV industry. Just about every one of those people thinks they're buying a car, and their expectations are extremely high. 
Once someone shells out lots of cash for their new mobile chariot, they don't expect to need to head back to the dealer, or even the manufacturer, to fix a problem that prevents them from taking their RV out on the road. Yet this is what new owners of RVs experience. The rule, typically, is don't buy a new RV. If you buy a new RV, you're going to be sitting in a dealership for two years getting it fixed, says Greg Gerber, founder and editor of RV Daily Report, an online trade publication he ran for 10 years. Starting this year, the industry will look to change that. On September 23, a $10 million facility called the RV Technical Institute is set to open in Elkhart County, Indiana, where more than two-thirds of RVs in the U. Unlike cars, which are built along robotic assembly lines, RVs are largely built by hand along manual assembly lines. They are, at their most fundamental level, houses on wheels. The Olishas say that quality since the recession has gone down the drain. Quality, in this case, spans a range of concerns. Becky and Tom recall their 2018 motorhome missing a black tank flush, a relatively inexpensive part that helps in cleaning out the onboard tank that holds wastewater from the toilet. They bring up the walkthroughs of units they've done over the last several years at the Hershey RV Show, which is routinely billed as America's largest showcase of recreational vehicles. The one thing we find is there's always broken doors or latches in the cabinets, and this is in brand new units, says Becky. Gerber, who has been writing about RVing since 2000, packed up his life in 2014 and spent four years full-time in his own RV, interviewing fellow owners across the country to catalog what he calls the RV industry death spiral. That's what really woke me up to the problem that consumers have getting RVs, he says. There's been a noticeable decline in the quality of RVs coming out since the Great Recession, and I don't know, really, what's causing that. His best guess, as an outsider looking in, comes down to the sheer quantity of recreational vehicles currently being built. With demand so high and most manufacturers concentrated in Elkhart, a town of 50,000 where it's estimated more than 80% of all RVs worldwide are built, a labor force already stretched thin is being asked to pump out even more RVs. Who's to say something wouldn't slip through the cracks every now and then? Unlike cars, which are built along robotic assembly lines, RVs are largely built by hand along manual assembly lines. They are, at their most fundamental level, houses on wheels, and one motorhome's floor plan might be entirely different from the next. Not to mention that a teardrop camping trailer, for example, is not a Class B paneled van trailer, and therefore will be constructed differently. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.